witches welcome to a new video and the second part of my closet witch series in my first video i explained to you what a closet witch is the different types of closet witches and why they still exist and how you can still be witchy in a dangerous environment so if you haven't watched it but are interested to watch it then I will link it at the end, or this way, I don't know, <laughs> so you can watch it in case you haven't done so. Okay, so in today's video I would like to talk about some more practice-based tips for the Closet Witch. So I think, again, we should start with a more unprivileged closet witch um, so that means what can you do to practice in hiding I explained to you how you can you know camouflage your environment so it isn't as obvious anymore for your dangerous environment that you practice now what you can do if you manage to get something like this as an you know surround yourself with the nature theme then you can look into elementary witchcraft if it's possible for you into kitchen witchcraft if it's possible for you into gardening so herbalism and all that is incorporated with it you can look into that because for the outside you could just say I'm interested in cooking I would like to work on my cooking skills I like to cook I like to bake and it is very easy to hide your craft while doing so because you don't have to draw symbols into your cake you don't have to you know, incorporate any weird ingredients. You could just make a simple cake without any symbols at all. Just imagine, you know, just have your intention while cooking, while baking, what you want to achieve with what you're doing right now, what you're creating. That is already enough to create, to work magic. So, if you live in a really dangerous environment you can still use magic in cooking okay just let out uh, leave out the sigils leave out any other symbols people say you should cough in somewhere because nobody will see it afterward um, afterwards because in a really dangerous environment don't risk it just big normal things and just work with your intention you have in your heart, in your mind. Just work with that. It's totally fine and it still works. Okay? So, cooking. Look into that. That's a way how you can practice safely. Knitting. Housework. Still, you can do so much and incorporate magic into it without anyone noticing. You don't, again, have to work with symbols. You just have to work with intention. Look up color correspondences and incorporate them into your knitting, into what you wear. Just enchant your clothing and imagine with every time you wash them in the washing machine that they get clean and then you can put new energy on it, whatever you need based on the color, based on the situation, you know? work with what you have be creative that's one of the essential skills of a closet witch being creative to stay safe okay so i said gardening herbalism if it is critical for you to work with herbs themselves just concentrate on gardening flowers Flowerless plants and maybe some kitchen herbs if those are okay. Try to figure out what's fine with your environment and then just go from there. 
maybe grow some vegetables, you know? And then just mark it as a hobby, that you're interested in it, that you like it, and that you're interested in the environment, for, because you basically are, and that you want to learn it because it interests you, that way you can already work on your gardening skills, which you will need later on for herbalism, and maybe when you can incorporate some kitchen herbs for your mother and grandmother or whoever cooks in your family that you can already build up some knowledge about it you know that you already start to get basic foundations basic knowledge about how that all works so and then again work with intention Maybe look up the correspondences or create your own correspondences for those plants you're planting. Okay, so now we have gardening, we have kitchen witchcraft. What else did I say? I already forgot. <laughs> um, right, house cleansing. So how can you, when you do chores at home? How can you incorporate magic without anyone noticing? Um, so, what you could do is, instead of, if you have a favorite song, take that song, take the melody, and just hum it, you know, just like, mm -hmm, and don't sing the lyrics. And instead of thinking of the lyrics in your head, think about an incantation in your head for cleansing your house while maybe preparing the washing water for the windows or the floor water, you know, when you have to wash the floors or anything like that. Then just hum the melody and think the incantation in your head. Just incorporate it because that won't draw any suspicion. You just have to watch out if anyone asks you about it, but if they know that's your favorite song, for example, then they won't ask you when you clean up and you hum a little bit around, you know, like, sing a little bit. <laughs> it's not that suspicious. Um, what you can do too is work with the symbols on the cleaning paper, you know, like when you buy bottles, there are sometimes plants on it, they sometimes work with colors. Again, use the color correspondences and use your intention instead of words to use it to cleanse your space and anything else in your house. And maybe when you vacuum your room, Imagine how the energy gets sucks, sucked into the vacuum and then how it gets thrown out when you take out whatever is left in the vacuum, you know? Like all that dirt. Just little things. Be creative again. Your intention is important, whatever you do. If you have the intention, then it can work. So those are just some ideas how you can make it work in your environment to practice without anyone noticing. And if you have a nature-based room, like the cottage aesthetic, for example, how I said in my last video, um, then you can even work with candle magic, but again, just with the intention while lighting a candle without anyone noticing what you're doing. Okay. The same with stones, stakes, plants. You can still work with them in your magic with intention instead of words. Or use words in your head. Be creative. I hope it helped you, gave you some inspiration what you can do to work in an even really hard environment to, you know, still work your magic. Oh, and one little thing, 
If you have a simple notebook, use code words and try to remember those and don't write them down or make sure that nobody can find the key list, the key points of, you know, the code, what those mean. Because then you can still make notes, you can still write things down, but without them knowing what it means. Or they will think like that doesn't make any sense, you know. Use code words, like codes, to write it down and then they won't know anything. Or maybe um, what you can do also, write in codes and maybe get a diary. And then just everything that has to do with your craft, put it in your diary in code. Because then, if somebody should ever find it and try to read it, you can say, it's my diary and I wrote it in code so nobody can read it instead of, uh, except of me, you know. That is a tip for, for you. It just, you know, came up in my mind. I'm like, that's a typical tip for Claws of Witches, but how to make it work when you have an extreme controlling environment, that's how. Coats, everyone, coats. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Those are my ideas, like some tips for you you can work with or I hope at least they gave you some inspiration what you can do to practice your craft and secret to stay safe. Yeah. And um, I hope I see you by my next video. Videos are uploaded every second Wednesday so make sure not to miss it. And if you haven't joined us yet, remember to do so. Except for the people who have a really dangerous environment, just put it in the code and come back if you like, <laughs> you know, when you have the opportunity. Because I know for a fact that some parents like to control what you're watching, on what sites you went and so on and so on. So just stay safe, stay magical and <clears throat> one moment. Don't do anything stupid. Okay, my little witches, I love you so much and I hope you're doing alright, doing fine and that you're safe. That's all I want to say. And if you have any more tips for people who have a really dangerous environment, write them down in the comments so we can help each other stay safe and still grow and be ourselves. Until in two weeks. <laughs>